so anybody that's uh, checked out any of my social media stuff, like Instagram or whatever, sees we do uh, lots of tubing, um, welding fabrication work, and uh, anybody that's ever tried cutting elbows and things of that nature, I'm sure can relate to this. So over the last 15 years or so, I've uh, spent a lot of money and time trying out a lot of different tools. Um, some, you buy them and uh, they're okay, you use them every now and then. Um, some of them end up being useless pieces of crap that you should probably just throw away, but they sit and rot in your toolbox for no reason. Then uh, every now and then you come across one of those tools that uh, the first time you use it, you know you're going to use it every day. You got to tell all your friends about it and uh, you know if it breaks, you're going to a replacement immediately and uh, you know something that you can't live without So I think the coolest part about this uh, particular tool is kind of the value it brings. Um, sort of the initial thought process was potentially going to require a different tool for each different size elbow. Um, and then you run into the different bend radius. So on this side, uh, we have two, two and a half inch and three inch with uh, one times the diameter for centerline radius. So a three inch elbow uh, would be on a three inch centerline. And then on this side, um, the same two, two and a half and three inch, but on one and a half inch centerline. So a three inch elbow would be uh, 4.5 uh, centerline radius. Um, so the difference would be, um, as you can probably see the, uh, the centerline radius uh, 
significantly different between three inch and uh, 4.5 inch, and these are three inch elbows. Um, so you have multiple different variations that uh, will all work in this tool. Um, and the other thing that's pretty cool is um, if you're creative, there, there's, I've actually found a lot of other uses for it. Um, you know, ultimately anything that you can clamp in it, it's going to work. Um, and for example, like two inch, uh, schedule 10, schedule 40 pipe elbows. Um, I found that those actually work in here pretty well. Uh, also. Okay. So we refer to this, uh, cutting tool as an elbow cutting fixture, um, which typically we're referring to more like the sanitary style, um, elbows that, uh, you know, don't have the, the long legs on them or they do, they're either pretty short. Um, and then this is more what we would refer as like a, a mandrel bend. Um, so it's designed to work with these, but it can absolutely work with these if uh, you just pay attention to what you're doing, really. Um, so it can go in, you know, this direction and work function just as it would with this. Um, but if you go in from this angle uh, with straight here, you're going to get to the point where you bottom out and it won't go any further. Um, but generally speaking, when you have this large of a piece and this much straight section on it, uh, you can just cut it in a traditional manner. Um, or, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to, you could cut the straight section off and use it. Uh, and um, this piece of tubing is aluminum. Uh, it absolutely works with aluminum. Um, or, again, if your saw can cut it, uh, you should have no issues. Uh, using it. So the tool was uh, originally designed to be used in a horizontal bandsaw, as that's what I try to use a majority of the time. Um, just throw whatever it is I'm cutting in there, um, start the cut, walk away, and come back when it's completed. So that in itself saves a lot of time. Um, but we also incorporated um, an additional way to secure the tubing in the center here so that way you can push it through a vertical bandsaw which a lot of people use um, i'm not a huge fan of them but sometimes you don't have a choice like a abrasive wheel either uh you know cut off wheel like a handheld one or um like a chop saw those dangerous uh death trap things so switching from uh tubing sizes is, is pretty uh, pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, you just simply loosen the hardware on the back side here, and then uh, the plate is marked uh, for which size tubing you're working with. I uh, set it in, and then you can either tighten the bolts um, or just kind of leave them finger tight. I prefer to leave them finger tight, one, so I don't have to grab tools anytime I need to change sizes, um, and two, it, it actually loosens this up a little bit more. So depending, again, if, if you're doing a vertical saw, you might want to tighten them up. Um, if you're putting in a, in a horizontal saw, it's going to clamp, the vise of the saw is going to clamp really tight on this. So these uh, just help line everything up, keep it secure. But I don't uh, personally um, tighten them with a wrench. Um, and this is a prototype unit, and it has seen a lot of use already. So um, it's honestly, it's pretty beat up. It's scratched up, and, and the hardware um, isn't what you're going to be using in the production versions. This item is actually a uh, partnership between uh, one of my other companies, uh, Sequence Manufacturing, and then also with uh, Tycon Industries, who uh, makes virtually everything you can think of in, in titanium. Um, all of the stuff that used to be, uh, you know, nearly impossible to find or actually impossible to find, and you'd have to have it custom made. And um, I mean, even something as simple as the V-band flange being at a, a one-off out of titanium is just an unrealistic amount of money for most uh, car enthusiasts. So now that you can, uh, you know, go on Tycon site and order just about everything that you want. Um, and then the other cool part about Tycon is they always have countless items in the works as well. So it's been uh, super enjoyable to uh, to team up with them on this this product. Um, so you'll be able to order this both through the Sequence Manufacturing website. Um, and the Tycon Industries website, um, and both companies have uh, dealers and, and vendors and things of that nature, so you should be able to get it from uh, just about anywhere. This probably doesn't make uh, tons of sense just sitting here on the table, uh, but um, you can see how, how simple it is to, to hold 
hold your elbows. Um, and probably uh, one of the best parts about it is it, it it's gonna cut as straight as your saw cuts. Um, and then it's also always gonna cut on the tangent of the bend. So see a lot of, uh, especially beginner fabricators that, you know, you hand them a 90 degree bend like this and you say, you know, draw a line 30 degrees and uh, you know, it's, it's it just, it doesn't follow the tangent of the bend. And if, if you weld that into a, a part, it just, it does not look right. It doesn't flow correctly and sort of defeats the whole purpose of using mandrel bends in the first place. So um, that's a pretty cool feature, but uh, you know, rather than sitting here talking about it, uh, let's see this thing in use. I still feel like such an idiot talking to a camera like this. That you've gotten to check that out hopefully you like it um, we have numerous other products in the works as well um, most of which are welding fabrication related um, for all of you uh, guys building turbo kits um, again I got a few things coming along that uh, are gonna save a ton of time eliminate some of the the weakest links within the systems that tend to break 
Um, so those should be pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited to use those myself. And um, actually have a handful of other product review type of things that we're going to do like this. Um, I'm sure they'll just get better with time as uh, I've never really done anything like this. But uh, uh, we also do a lot of uh, dyno tuning videos and... Um, you know, with our mainline Pro Hub Dyno, uh, we get some pretty high horsepower stuff on here, so it can be pretty exciting to watch. So, um, if it's something uh, you think you like, feel free to subscribe, and uh, hopefully, we'll be posting a lot more stuff here uh, in the near future. This thing is awesome. I just can't stop like flipping it around and staring at it. Love this thing. <laughs>